All right, and speaking of uh, job speculation, I meant to put this on the last episode. We were so jam-packed, did not have time to get to it. But Justin Fuente, if surely you've seen it by now, he got fired by Virginia Tech this week. And what did that result in? Of course, because it's the rumor mill season. Uh Uh-oh, Shane Beamer, Frank Beamer's son, all the connections there. Will Virginia Tech make that call? Uh, Shane Beamer did his best to throw a wet blanket on any of that speculation here this week in Columbia. Obviously, the Virginia Tech job opened up this morning. I know, you know, we know your history, your dad's history there and and your time there. Just wanted to ask you where you stand in relation to that and, and as the head coach at South Carolina right now, too. Yeah, uh, certainly you hate to ever see anyone uh, lose their job. Uh, So uh, tough from that standpoint. Obviously, I love Virginia Tech. I moved there when I was 10 years old. I I went to high school there. I went to college there. Uh, I coached there. My parents still live there. So I have special memories of um, uh, my time in Blacksburg, and that will always be, you know, special to me. But uh, this is where I want to be. When I said this was my dream job, uh, I wasn't just saying that to make it sound cool in a press conference or, or to get the job. This is where my wife and I and my family want to be. Uh, we didn't put that sign up over there in williams Bryce Stadium that said, welcome home, just because it was trendy and a slogan. This is home uh, for me. And uh, I want to be the head football coach here at South Carolina. I love working with or working for Ray Tanner and, and Chance Miller. They are fantastic, and we have an amazing relationship. Um, I love this state. I want to live in this state. I love this city. I want to be living in this city. I told our team a couple weeks ago, my son Hunter, he's in second grade, I guess. I want him to graduate high school from, you know, here in Columbia, and and this is where I want to be. We're we're just getting started. Uh, Recruiting is going amazingly uh, well. There's a lot of energy about this program right now. There's a lot of excitement about this program right now. Uh, my goal is to bring an SEC championship here to Columbia, and we're just in the beginning stages um, of it. So, no, I'm the, I'm the head coach at, at South Carolina. I want to be the head coach at South Carolina. And, and, and then, you know, probably beyond any of that is we use the word love around here a lot, and I love coaching these coaching these kids and uh, couldn't imagine uh, not coaching these guys and and uh, love what they're about and and love being their head football coach. All right, so I think this is the basically the best way you can handle a situation like this, particularly when your team is facing a fight for postseason, their postseason lives this week against Auburn. I mean, this cannot be a distraction at any point. And if you kind of half-ass this one like Lincoln Riley did on on the last episode, if you missed that, go back and check that out. But, yeah, any kind of uh, lingering doubt here in South Carolina, I mean, they just cannot afford to lose any focus. And I'm going to be perfectly honest. I try to be as honest as I can on this show. I'm a guy that's praised Shane Beamer, particularly the job he did last offseason. I think he did a better job than any of these first-year SEC coaches in the offseason, getting the recruiting going and, you know, just pushing the whole program in the right direction. The SEC media days, he knocked it out of the park. And I'm not sitting here saying that, uh, you know, he's been horrible as a coach here leading South Carolina to a 5-5 and record at this point, still having an opportunity to go 7-5. and Imagine if if they beat Auburn and Clemson, I mean, that'll be one hell of a season. So I'm not saying he's a terrible coach here, but to me, when it comes to game day, when it comes to staff decisions, when it comes to roster management even, I mean, the more I watch Jason Brown, he looks like the best quarterback they've had. And it still troubles me that uh, they found a way to get Luke Doty injured in preseason. So there are some issues. Basically what I'm dancing around is I don't know if Shane Beamer is even qualified for the Virginia Tech job. And that's not to say that uh, Virginia Tech's better than South Carolina. I'm not trying to make that argument, but I don't know if Virginia Tech is picking up the phone and making that call to Shane Beamer at this point because you got to remember where Frank Beamer had that program. They were constantly in it with the the Big East. It was the ACC annually in contention for the, the conference contention there. And they have not been that way for years. So they cannot afford to screw this up. Would Shane Beamer be a a good hire? Potentially he would be. But 
I don't know, man. I'd go with someone a little bit more veteran, in my opinion. But, uh, hey, that's just my thoughts on it. So I really don't think South Carolina, in a roundabout way, I guess I just backhanded complimented you. And not even your program, but more Shane Beamer. I don't think uh, you got to worry about losing Shane Beamer up to this point. Let him build. Let's see what he can do. Let him get a couple 10-win seasons before you're worried about losing him. So, hey, that's just kind of the way I see it. But I think this is the perfect way for Shane to address any speculation that he'd be interested in leaving after just one year. You'd hate to see that if you're a Gamecock. But like I said, man, they've got a big, big opportunity this Saturday going up against the Auburn Tigers who are down Bo Nix. They're down Anders Carlson. They're starting T.J. Finley, who if you go back and look at at uh, his one year at LSU, I know he played well against South Carolina. That's getting mentioned left and right all week. I don't think that has got anything to do with the game upcoming. But what I do think, you can there's a takeaway there. TJ Finley's not played that well on the road. And obviously that's where South Carolina's played the best this year. So you got to force TJ Finley to beat you. I mean, Auburn's going to want to dictate it with Mike Bobo, Tank, Bigsby, they're going to want to ground and pound. That was something that uh, Missouri was able to get get away with last week. That's why they beat the Gamecocks. Florida, not so much. Which South Carolina defense shows up this week, that is going to be paramount. And that's something uh, on the coaching staff's mind for sure. Hey, Coach, facing another top 10 rushing attack in the SEC this week, how confident are you the defense can bounce back and have a better performance than they had against Mizzou? And then on the flip side, Zaquandre had another good game. Talk to us about what you've seen out of his progress this season. Yeah, uh, as far as our defense, I mean, it seems like the it's story of uh, – I mean, it's SEC football. Every week it seems like you're getting ready to play uh, an explosive physical run game. I mean, you go back to, to Georgia – and their backs, and then you got Kentucky and Rodriguez coming in here, and uh, who you got Vanderbilt, and they had gone for I think 200 plus yards on Van- on Stanford when we played them, and and then you've got Florida and what they were able to do, or Tennessee and the, what they were able to do as a, the running game, and and then Florida and the way they ran the quarterback, and then last week with Beatty, and then this week with Bigsby and the rest of those running backs. So it's it's certainly. Uh, it's uh that's SEC football, you know for sure. So we've seen a lot of great running backs throughout the season. This is another uh, dynamic one that we're about to see. That's a little bit of a different style than some of the other ones we've seen. But our guys have shown that they can stop the run. I mean, that's what Florida does. Florida was averaging seven yards a carry when they came in here, and we stopped the run that that night. And and uh, we've got to be more consistent doing it than what we were against Missouri. We got to be more consistent as a football team in all phases. Uh, than what we were against Missouri because we just we were just we were just too inconsistent the other night. Uh, but our, I know our guys can. It's going to take a great commitment to it. It's going to create great physicality and and uh, you know we've got a they, they've shown they can do it. And then in- kicking out of the flip side of this, I just thought it was interesting. Brian Harson talking Bo Nix injury and just the toughness factor there. For you got to remember. Bo Nix, he broke his ankle in the third quarter. He stayed in the game for a quarter and a half. And he was still completing passes out there. He was still taking hits. I mean, I cannot imagine the pain tolerance he must have to have done that. Uh, Yes, he got pulled, but there was about, I want to say about three minutes left in the game. I think he got hurt with about nine minutes left in the third quarter. So that's a lot of football that he tried to play on a broken ankle. He may have even hurt Auburn's chances, to be honest with you. just being out there limited, but that's what a leader does, man. He goes out there and and tries to seal the deal and couldn't get it done. But uh, nonetheless, Brian Harson talks about uh, the toughness that took. And he talks about TJ Finley having to run the offense through a new quarterback. And he doesn't see it as that big of a deal, but you got to believe they're going to adjust to his skill set, which is, I think a lot different than Bo Nix. So, Uh, I think we're going to see a little bit different offense this week from the Auburn Tigers. A lot less rollouts, a lot less quarterback run, which is kind of the strength of Bo Nix's game. So let's kick it over to Brian Harson. Bo got kind of hurt there at the end of the third, and then he was able to come back in for a couple more drives. What do you think that says about him and just kind of his toughness to go back out there and play on that ankle injury? Yeah, well, that's, you know, the first thing we talk about, the quarterback position is toughness. And, you know, there's no question with that with Bo, and I've said that before. 
Um, he was injured on a, on a long throw that he had made, um, continued that drive, came out, got looked at, um, was able to go back into the game and play and, you know, was available to do that. So, you know, one is, you know, Bo's a tough, he's a tough individual, number one. Um, you know, he wants to win, he wants to succeed, he wants to be a part of that. Uh, says a lot about just, you know, his desire to be out there with his teammates and to provide whatever he can uh, from that position to try to help us win. Um, I love that, I love the attitude. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, he was injured and you know, he'll be out the rest of the season. Um, but he's got, a, he's got a great attitude about it, um, so. Uh, Ron, I, I guess when this week for TJ and, and Mike and you guys is one of the biggest things just kind of getting together and, and finding out comfort level and what he, what he likes in an offense like he would do, you know, with, say, Bo early in the year for him. Is, it, is that a big deal this week to kind of find out, hey, what do you like in this situation and kind of working together to, to kind of tailor the offense a little bit more towards him? Uh, we kind of know what he likes, and that, that's, that's been part of uh, every single week. You know, you want to know what those guys are thinking, and that's part of their preparation. Uh, that's part of the process where you get quarterbacks and players' opinions on things. Um, and most of the time it ties into what, what the coaches are thinking too. There's a lot of similarities there. Uh, but as far as TJ, we, we've already been doing that. You kind of know what he likes. You, and, again, we're going to have to still run our offense and do things that, that we feel are going to be successful, and he's going to have to be able to execute those. And he's – He's going to have done um, everything that we have in our game plan. It's just a matter of, you know, Bo's had more reps at it in practice and obviously more reps in the game. So TJ's seen it. He's done it. Um, he's going to get all the reps, you know, all those starting reps this week and have himself uh, prepared from that standpoint. And then, yeah, certainly his opinion and some of the things that he sees as he studies the film. Because uh, each player is a little bit different, you know, in what they do like. And so it might be a little more of this, a little less of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we still got to go operate our system and then execute it and make sure that, you know, everybody else has been in there playing. Uh, those guys uh, raise their level of play as well. So that that's the thing. When somebody gets injured, I don't just think that player has to come in there and, and be the guy that brings everything. It's the guys that have been playing, the Nick Brahms, uh, Kobe Hudson, Tank Bigsby's, those guys that have been playing, those are the guys that have to raise their level of execution too when you have a new player come in that hasn't had as many reps and, and has the same experience as some of those guys that are going to play for us in the game. So I'm counting on those guys to raise their level this week and their execution, uh, make sure they're doing their job so TJ can go in there and just operate and, and, and do what he's asked to do and um, play quarterback uh, the way we know he can and go out there and um, get himself ready and prepared and then come game day, go cut it loose and take advantage of your opportunity to play.